welcome to Grace Hill Moravian Church for our service on the 1st of November, All Saints Day. Our call to worship. We come together today with saints from all over the world to worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We come as saints on earth to join our prayers and praises with saints in heaven. O Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall speak your praise. O Lord, open our minds. And our hearts shall know your truth. O Lord, open our hearts. And our lives will reflect your love. And we sing our first hymn, number 14, All Heaven Declares. of praise from the book of Revelation. After that I looked and saw a great multitude which no one could number, from all races and tribes, nations and languages, standing before the throne and the Lamb. They were robed in white and had palm branches in their hands, and they shouted aloud, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne and unto the Lamb. All the angels who stood round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures prostrated themselves before the throne and worshipped God, crying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour, power and might be to our God for ever. Amen. Who are these clothed in white robes, and whence have they come? These are they who have come out of a great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And now they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not smite them nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living waters. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And our prayer of confession. Forgive us, Father, for the times we have denied we know you. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us, Lord Jesus, for the people we have hurt and ignored. Christ have mercy. Forgive us, gracious Spirit, for the ways we abuse your love. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God forgive us and give us courage to turn away from sin and to follow Christ. Amen. And we join with the whole family of God, praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Halloween seems to be celebrated more and more each year, and the decorations outside people's houses get more elaborate. I have loved seeing all the pumpkins that you have created for Halloween, and I've really enjoyed the pictures that you have sent in of your lanterns lit and unlit. It's really appreciated, and I hope you enjoy this little film that Debbie has put together of all the pictures you have sent me. tried growing our own giant pumpkin this year but it really wasn't a complete success. A bit small really. Pumpkins are okay when they're unlit but they are completely transformed when they have a light inside them. They can be spooky, they can be funny, they can be clever and they bring a real smile to my face. It's the light inside the pumpkin that makes all the difference. It doesn't take away from the pumpkin itself, but it changes it into something that gives light and humour in a dark world. And I think that's a great illustration for what saints do. Today is All Saints Day, and last night was All Hallows Eve. And that's where the name Halloween comes from. It's a merging of the name. All Hallows' Eve is when the church would traditionally hold a vigil before All Saints' Day, a day of celebration. And hallowed is an old English word which means holy or sanctified. So All Hallows' Eve is the evening before the day you celebrate the Holy Ones. So it's not really about spooks and ghouls, it's about the holy people of God. And we can think of the great saints of the past, like St. Patrick, who brought Christianity to this island, or St. David in Wales, or people like Martin Luther, who helped bring in the Reformation and a new understanding of faith, or Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who resisted the false ideology of the Nazis. They have special days when we remember them, St. Patrick's Day, St. David's Day, and so on. But All Saints' Day is the day when we thank God for all those saints who don't have a special day. And particularly we can think of the saints of God who've inspired us, who in their life have shone through the light of God for us, 
just like light shines out from those pumpkin lanterns. And you might have noticed in the film that one of those lanterns had a cross carved in it. So All Saints Day is a great day to be able to remember the saints in our lives, the unknown saints as well, and to thank God for them. And tomorrow is All Souls Day, and on that day it's traditional to remember and give thanks for all the people of God. So over these two days, there's a lot of remembering of people and times past and a lot of love and thanks. Now we've done a prayer trail around Grace Hill for anyone who is interested and it goes from last night up to Remembrance Day. Just get in touch with me if you would like a copy and I'll email it or post it to you. So I hope you enjoy today All Saints Day and tomorrow All Souls Day. I hope you remember the people who've helped you in the past and your own family and friends. And may we all be counted in the number of the saints and go marching in together. reading is Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people. For those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good years, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, 
but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants, no one in, who takes refuge in him will be condemned. The New Testament reading comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 1 to 8, Paul's ministry in Thessalonica. You know, brothers and sisters, that our visit to you was not without results. We had previously suffered and been treated outrageously in Philippi, as you know, but with the help of our God, we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. For the appeal we make does not spring from error or unpure motives, nor are we trying to trick you. On the contrary, we speak as those approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel. We are not trying to please people, but God who tests our hearts. You know we never use flattery, nor did we put on a mask to cover up greed. God is our witness. We were not looking for praise from people, nor from you or anyone else, even though as apostles of Christ, we could have asserted our authority. Instead, we were like young children among you. Just as a nursing mother cares for her children, so we cared for you. Because we loved you so much, we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts and minds be found acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I'm going to crave your forgiveness. I had not intended to talk about John Senek, but I am going to. The readings for today are a bit of a mash. The reading from 1 Thessalonians is because we are following St Paul's thoughts through as he writes to the fledgling church there. And we're using Psalm 34 because it's the psalm set in the lectionary for All Saints Day. And I loved the image in it of looking to God and being radiant. And it reminded me of the pumpkin lanterns at this time of year. But this psalm also exemplifies the attitudes of the saints. It speaks of them praising God continually, of seeking God, of crying to the Lord in trouble, of not being saved from trouble, but of seeing God in the midst of the troubles. It speaks of seeking peace and departing from evil. And there is a recognition in this psalm that a God-filled life may indeed be a crushed life. There are wonderful verses in Paul's letter, second letter to the Corinthians, where Christians are described as giving a fragrance and aroma for Christ. And of course, as any cook knows, the fragrance comes from the herbs being crushed. So in being broken and bearing many afflictions, it can produce a wonderful fragrance, the spirit of our Lord. Now, I don't know of any saints who've had an untroubled life with great personal success, wonderful careers, huge wealth, and good health to boot. This psalm is about a trust in God and his redemptive purpose in the writer's life, even when everything all around seems to be crumbling. The psalmist believes that, despite appearances, God will deliver. And it was this psalm that spoke to a troubled 19-year-old, John Senek, who felt so unworthy and lived in fear of hell. On the 7th of September, 1737, he entered St. Lawrence Church in the centre of Reading, and he heard this psalm, Psalm 34, being read, and the words just leapt out of the page to him. In Senek's own words, I was so uneasy that I was obliged to get up and go. I was like some outcast in a foreign land. My heart was ready to burst, my soul at the brink of hell. When I entered the church and had fallen on my knees, I began murmuring, as I often did, because my cross seemed more heavy than was laid on anyone else beside. Near the end of the psalm, these words were read, Great are the troubles of the righteous, 
but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And he that putteth his trust in the God shall not be destitute. I had room just to think, who can be more destitute than me? When I was overwhelmed with joy, and I believed there was mercy, my heart danced for joy and my dying soul revived. I heard the voice of Jesus saying, I am thy salvation. I no more groaned under the weight of sin. The fears of hell were taken away. And being sensible that God loved me and Christ died for me, I rejoiced in God my Saviour. So the burden of the fear of hell and unworthiness was lifted from Senek's life and his heart. But those of you who know anything of the life of John Senek know it wasn't to be a life of ease. Jesus Christ had turned him round and he was to live the life of an itinerant evangelist, teacher, encourager, writer and poet. And hearing a call to Ireland, he later became known as the Apostle to Ireland. He was to face hostility from his mother, danger in preaching in many places, slander, poverty, rejection, and an early death. It's not success in the way that the world counts it, but it is a life of devotion to his Lord and to the poor of the land. John Senek knew what it was to have the afflictions of the righteous, but he trusted that no one who takes refuge in God will be condemned. Senek was not perfect, but he surely in Grace Hill deserves our remembrance and our thanks to God on All Saints Day. And so we turn to St. Paul, called by a man in a vision to Macedonia, shamefully treated in Philippi, where he and Silas had been flogged and put in prison, and continuing on to Thessalonica, undeterred because he wanted to share the good news with the people there. So in our passage for today, we see Paul explaining to the believers in Thessalonica that he came to them in love, that he used no rhetorical devices, he did not flatter them or seek their flattery, neither did he try and get money off them. He explained that he cared for them as a nurse cares for her own children. Such tender words, a lovely expression. He loved them because God loved him. He was reaching the people not only with his words, but in his relationships with them. And that sounds like Senex's style too. He did preach to the crowds many times, but he spent much more time speaking heart to heart with individuals. No wonder Count Zinzendorf called Senek, Paul revived. What you see in Paul and in John Senek's life is a desire not to seek good for themselves, but to seek good for those whom they were ministering to. They sought not to be approved by authority, but to be approved by God. They sought not to be popular, but to be faithful to their calling. Not to seek safety, but to risk everything for the good news of Jesus. Not to be dictatorial, but loving and nurturing. Not to gain money, but to say, share their very selves with others. It's countercultural in so many ways, but these are the standards of God's kingdom that we are all measured by. So in these two readings, we see something of what sainthood means. Few people are called to itinerant evangelism like St. Paul and John Senek. But we are called to be faithful, whatever the circumstances, to be trustworthy and to trust God, to serve with love and generosity because God loves us and his grace is his wonderful generosity. We are called to nurture and to encourage. We're called to refrain from speaking evil, but to spread the gospel in word and in deed. We're not to seek money above all things. We all need money to live on, but it's a hollow goal because money isn't going with you. And instead of seeking money, we're called to seek God's face. 
And the saints we remember today, those named and unnamed, are those who were lit up by the love of Jesus, by the light of Jesus in their lives. This is the Saviour who reached down to us with love and patience and who still gently pursues us to bring us home. So let all the saints draw us closer to the reason for our faith. Jesus, our Saviour, and the light of the world, whose light can never be extinguished. Let us pray. Let us thank God for all who have followed Christ faithfully in life, even unto death, from the earliest years to our own generation. We think of the great Christian saints and leaders, but also of many humble folk who have no memorial, of all who love the Lord Jesus with all their mind and heart and soul and strength. As we remember them, may our own faith be strengthened. May we find new courage and broader love. And may we answer again the call, come, follow me, whatever it costs us. Glorious God, as we celebrate the lives of those church members who have shone with the brightness of your love, we offer you ourselves and our lives in fresh commitment and conscious awareness of our need for you in this church and as individual Christians. Just as I am, I come. Powerful God, may your kingdom of love and peace be established in this world and grow. We pray for both the influential and the ignored, both the popular and the disliked, both the ambitious and the vulnerable. Teach us all your ways and your values. Just as I am. I come. Loving God, we call to mind our families and friends, neighbours and colleagues, thanking you for all the loving care and forgiveness and asking your light to shine in all areas of hurt and misunderstanding. Just as I am. I come. Healing God, we bring to you those whose lives are darkened by pain, fear or weariness. Come to our aid. Help us to bear what must be carried and take from us all resentment and bitterness, replacing it with the abundance of peace. Just as I am, I come. Eternal God, we thank you for all the saints, those recognised by the church, and those known only to a few and to you. We praise you for their example and rejoice that they live in your heaven with every tear wiped away. In your mercy, may all who have died in your friendship know your lasting peace. Just as I am, I come. Gracious God, you take us as we are and transform us by your life in us. Clear our lives of all that is not you, so that we let your goodness shine through the colours of our personalities and gifts that you have given us. Just as I am. I come. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, Son our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.
prayer and blessing. Go now and live in awe of God. Purify yourselves in heart and in deed. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Show mercy and make peace. And may God take your burdens and free you from fear. May Christ Jesus be your shepherd and your shelter. And may the Holy Spirit guide you to springs of the water of life. Amen. Amen.